This whole tutorial is about achieving uh, the best possible image quality on a print or on screen. Mm -hmm. But as we touched on in the introduction, this really has to all start with a quality image, yep. aesthetically and technically. Yep. So why don't we first look briefly at some of the technical things that people, you know, you're just not going to get a good print if you don't start with a good image. Mm -hmm. And that means a sharp image, well exposed. So let's run them down. Mm -hmm. um, well exposed, sharp lens, good lens, uh, no motion blur. Uh, so a shutter means, speed suitable for... Right. For either the focal length of lens, yes. your hand holding, that means image stabilization if you have and it. And it's funny because... Or a good we, tripod. Yeah. Or uh, we used to talk about 2x over the focal length as the minimum shutter speed. And I think we've talked about increasing that now to 3x. Well, it used to be 1x in the days of film. Then it was 2x and as we got into higher resolution digital. I don't even know anymore. I did some shooting with uh, my medium format back the other day, hand holding mm -hmm. a short lens at a two fiftieth, mm -hmm. and I could see motion blur. Mm -hmm. So I'm at the point now where I don't want to shoot anything with a high res back, for example, unless it's on a tripod. Yeah. Well, for example, last year when we shot in Joshua Tree, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that uh, you did and then I did using a quality tripod. Uh, I didn't always have my center column all the way down. Right. And I do have <laughs> And Chris has column. some footage showing yeah. that you had your column up, yes. which makes it a monopod, not a tripod. <laughs> yes, but that was actually with a wide-angle lens, not with a right. phone. You're forgiven. Um, the other thing is to be able to shoot with mirror lockup. Mm -hmm. uh, just the flopping of the mirror mm -hmm. and the focal plane shutter has a big impact on the potential sharpness, particularly right. if it's a longish lens. And live view is one of the things that uh, if you're shooting in live view mode, you already have the mirror up. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, one of the advantages of the Alpha camera, those little lenses with the little leaf shutters. Leaf shutters, right, instead of focal plane shutters. Yeah. Remember, I, I've talked about this online and in other uh, tutorials. On some cameras, the shutter actually mm -hmm. causes the camera to vibrate. I know one of the biggest, uh, guiltiest parties in that was the Pentax 6-7. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful camera that yeah. was. But the shutter was so big. Yeah. And even on a DSLR, you know, a Nikon, a Canon, there are certain shutter speeds in the half second, quarter second range where the shutter opening and closing can actually cause some vibration. Yeah. Not a lot, but enough to make the image less than as good as it could be. Uh, another factor in terms of the lens, a lot of times, is the f-stop. If you, you need to stop down to get enough depth of field, but you don't want to stop down so much that the lens suffers from diffraction. Right, now let's, let's define a couple of things, just really quickly. A theoretically perfect lens, and there is no such thing, but a theoretically perfect lens is at its best wide open. It is. No, truly. Talk to optical scientists about this. But there's no such thing as a perfect lens. Mm -hmm. And so usually by stopping down one or two stops, mm -hmm. you're actually now uh, increasing the resolution. And if you look at the MTF charts or resolution charts, you typically see lenses that are about two stops to three stops down from wide open are at their best. But again, depending on uh, the size of the lens, the size of the sensor, by the time you get to, uh, well, in the case of a little pocket camera, when you get to f8, you're into diffraction. Mm -hmm. uh, on a DSLR, it's usually at about f16. Mm -hmm. um, but on a large, for a medium format camera, you might be able to go to 32 before you hit diffraction. Maybe, but that's something that you have to test. You have to and test. Prove yeah. for that lens and sensor combination. Right. Another thing that actually has a big impact on the image quality is the noise. Mm -hmm. And um, clearly running your ISO up to get the shot is worthwhile. Yeah. In fact, there's a lot of times that I'll run the ISO up so that I can use a faster shutter speed. 
Well, there are in fact several demos. Mm -hmm. I know that you have a, you know some demos around noise, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do something on HDR, mm -hmm. not super HDR, but just simple bracketing uh, to try and you know get the most out of an image. And it's interesting because some little cameras now do automatic HDR. Yeah, pretty. You know. <laughs> My iPhone four does really <laughs> remarkable good uh, JPEG HDR. Yeah, I know. So there are a lot of things to look at there. But one of the things I think we want to uh, touch on is the whole question of sensor size, resolution, and there are a lot is of... bigger always better? Yeah, really. Well, yeah, I think Godzilla was right. Yeah. <laughs> bigger is better. <laughs> but not necessarily in every situation. So, for example, here's a shot that I did with uh, the Panasonic GH2. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a 16 megapixel micro four thirds camera. And ISO 200. Yeah, ISO 200. So, you know, it was, uh, and if I, you look at the histogram, histogram's pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I uh, go into develop mode and hit the J key, you can see I've just got the very Ooh. tiniest little bit of highlight clipping. And this is a raw file, so, you know, no big deal. And the shadows, you know, almost close. So yeah. I've, I've used the whole dynamic range. And so I expose this properly. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the print. Just pull one off the printer here. Michael, why don't you go ahead and hold that up and show the viewers. Show the folks at home. Yeah. And we can zoom in and I'll do that on the screen. Mm -hmm. But you can zoom the quality is terrific. Yeah. And the image size, the print size. Most people aren't going to make much bigger than a 13 by well, 19. Let me see the print for just yeah. a second. Now let me also do this. Let me go into the print module. Yeah, pretty tight. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Now, I'm going to put this down for a second. Let's go into the print module. Now, this is going to print, this print here, which we just did, is 11 by almost 13 inches at 291 PPI. Mm -hmm. Now, and that's from a 16 megapixel. Mm -hmm. And what that means and you with... you did crop it a little bit. Oh, I definitely cropped it here. Let mm -hmm. me show you the cropping that I did. Uh, we'll go back to the develop module. And I'll go, here's the import. Mm-hmm. Okay, so import and yeah, how I ended up. Which another factor in all of this is how much you crop in. I mean, I used to shoot Hasselblad two and a quarter square film all the time, knowing that I was going to take a vertical out of a square or a horizontal out of a square. Mm -hmm. With digital capture now, if you come in too far, you've turned a P65 60 megapixel into a 24 <laughs> megapixel uh, one DS but that's two. still enough. Yeah. Still enough. Now let's do this. I'm just going to go here to 100%. Mm -hmm. And you can see, you know, the quality, the resolution. It's really good. Hit the tab key. Hit the tab key. There we go. So okay. we can see the whole image. Right. So now, you know, that it's really sharp. I've made mm -hmm. a nice 13 by 19 ish, mm -hmm. you know, size print. So now but let's go to the other extreme. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a good print and it's a good image, but it's not. It's you not couldn't go much bigger than that. Right. Now, if you want to go big, you know, and some people say go big or go home. Let us look at a shot I did down in Mexico. This was with the Leaf Aptus 12 on a 645 mm -hmm. AF uh, body with a 150 mil lens. And now let me go to 100% on this. Yeah. <laughs> and as you can see up here, just phenomenal detail. Yeah, but now I can't. I don't have the thing to move. Thank you. Keep your hands off your, off my keyboard, please. <laughs> I'm a big boy. I'm just trying to see the big picture. I can Mike. do it myself. Okay. Anyhow. But you can see the kind of resolution. Mm -hmm. And now if we go into the print module, and here on 11 by 14, 11 by 15, and 691 I'm at PPI. 691 PPI. I could make a 30 by 40 print of this. Mm -hmm. And it would just be absolutely, you know, stunning quality, as, as you see here at, at 100%. So the bottom line is really the megapixel size that you need is based upon what your final output is going to be, whether it's for print or screen. Mm -hmm. Now, clearly, if you're doing a, an image for a small print or uh, a display, you know, like an iPad, um, you don't need 60 megapixels. Well, and in fact, I've got an <laughs> yeah, example sure. here. We've got to see this. This is, this is too cool. <laughs> the exact same shot <laughs> with an iPhone 
uh, 3GS and uh, a P65, and Kevin might not like showing this, but if what you need is a four by six inch picture, you know. Well, let, before you do this, this is a fun demo, but I should mention an article that I did back in the fall of 2008, mm -hmm. and it was titled, You've Gotta Be Kidding. It was a comparison that I did very casually between a Hasselblad H2 with a P45 back and a little Canon G10, mm -hmm. which I think was about, what, eight, eight megapixels at the time? I think it was eight. You know, eight versus 39 megapixels. Mm -hmm. And I made this size print, 13 by 19, number of different shots, lined them up, and I asked industry pros to come into my gallery. People who had been in the printing trade, who'd been photographers, who'd been in, you know, who just real pros. I had a hundred years worth of professional. The experts. These were the experts. And I had written in pencil on the back, which camera had shot which. And I had these prints and I laid them out and I said, tell me which ones were done with the little Canon G10 and which one were done with the P45. And no one did any better than chance. You know, it was from 40, 60 to 60, 40, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of the balance. And it was incredible. And people got really pissed. Mm -hmm. You know, they were really upset. How can you do? And it comes down to the same thing. So having now said that, show me your iPhone versus your P65. Okay. <laughs> so what I did, and I did this for the real world image sharpening book, uh, I compared a P65 to an iPhone 3GS. Okay. So, which do you think is which? Uh, that's the P65. Yes. Yeah. Although, uh, but the reason I know it has nothing to do with the resolution that I see. It has to do with the dynamic range. Yeah. Cleaner highlights, primarily cleaner highlights. Yeah. I'm looking at the white flower on the left. Where this really comes into play, it is very true. It's all depending upon the output size. And mm -hmm. if you're going to the web or to a small print, then it could be argued that the P65 is overkill. But where you can really see the difference, currently I'm in the survey mode in Lightroom. But then if I go in to compare and zoom in, yeah, that's where <laughs> the difference is. This is zoomed in one to one. So on the left, you can see all the detail. If I were to zoom in, even further on that, it would just literally yeah. fall apart. Well, your screen is what, about 110 pixels per inch? Yeah, more Something or less. like more or less. So, uh, no, that's where uh, the different, how big is the iPhone's camera? Is it a five megapixel or a three megapixel? Five or six, I think. Yeah, yeah. right, compared to? 60. 60. Yeah. Okay, but I think not to beat the, this horse to death, but it needs to be said that you have to buy a camera based on what your output's gonna be. Mm -hmm. And if all you're ever gonna do is show your work online and make wallet size or eight by 10 prints, a little pocket point and shoot with a decent lens, you know, is, is one of the ones that could shoot raw preferably. Mm -hmm. You know, get good image quality, mm -hmm. but you don't need a gajillion megapixels. Mm -hmm. You know, something in the range of 10 to 12 you know, is really just fine. Mm -hmm. But if like you and me, we exhibit our work, we want to make big prints, that's when, you know, something like a 24 megapixel DSLR or a 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 megapixel back can make sense. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of having the right tool.